Is coffee harmful? Why are many people afraid of caffeine, while others, on the contrary, take it regularly in pills? When is this drug indicated, and what harm can it do to the body? These questions will be answered in our video. How does caffeine work on the body? For a long time, coffee was considered a harmful drink. This was explained by the effect of caffeine on the heart, and as a result of this information, millions of people around the world began to refuse this drink. At the same time, caffeine was available in the form of supplements and pills. So how to resolve this paradox? Modern studies have proven that coffee has many useful properties, and it is possible and necessary to consume it, if you know the measure, as with most other drinks. The benefits of coffee, as well as its harm, due to its high content of caffeine. By the way, there is the same amount of caffeine in tea and mate. Caffeine is one of the most important stimulants of the central nervous system. Its action is based on its interaction with adenosine. The latter substance is produced when the body is tired. The increase in adenosine levels activates the reaction of neurons, which puts the body into a reduced activity mode. Caffeine, on the contrary, suppresses adenosine and neurons activate the body's activity. Therefore, thanks to caffeine, you become more alert and energetic. The duration of this effect depends strongly on the individual characteristics of the body and varies from 2 to 6 hours. It should be understood that such artificial stimulation of the body does not saturate it, which means that after the caffeine effect ends, there is a sharp decline in strength. Benefits for the body The described effect of caffeine is not the only advantage of its use. It has an effect on various internal organs and can activate their work. First, of course, this is the brain and the nervous system. In addition to stimulating brain activity, caffeine helps in the prevention of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases. People who regularly drank caffeinated beverages during their lives were less likely to suffer from these diseases in old age. Also noted the positive effect of caffeine in the prevention of strokes. Secondly, it is the heart. But here there is a nuance. Caffeine increases heart rate and increases blood pressure. Therefore, it is shown only to people who suffer from hypotension. In hypertension and tachycardia, on the contrary, caffeine is contraindicated. Thirdly, caffeine improves intestinal peristalsis. But at the same time, it increases the acidity of the stomach, so it can be taken only immediately before or immediately after a meal. The fourth important effect of this substance is that it removes excess calcium from the body, which slows down the formation of atherosclerotic plaques and blood vessels. Caffeine also increases insulin sensitivity and reduces the percentage of fat mass. That is why it is recommended for some forms of diabetes and obesity. Caffeine is also used in the treatment of depression. The studies showed that its intake reduces by 20% the frequency and the risk of exacerbation of this disease in women. By the way, coffee also reduces the risk of developing some types of cancer. But this is not only the merit of caffeine, but also other antioxidants that are contained in this drink. The harm of caffeine. Despite such significant advantages of this substance, there is a number of disadvantages of caffeine. First, as previously mentioned, it activates the body without regard to the real resources for its vital functions. Therefore, excessive intake of caffeine in the body, especially in combination with lack of adequate rest, can lead to overwork and chronic fatigue. Secondly, it can stimulate negative manifestations of nervous system agitation, namely insomnia, anxiety, and tremors. But most often these problems occur in case of overdose of caffeine. And another disadvantage is its effect on the stomach. Because caffeine can increase the acidity of the stomach, when there are various damages to its mucosa, including gastritis, it can lead to nausea and heartburn. How and how much caffeine to take? The daily rate of this substance for a healthy person should not exceed 300 mg. From solid foods caffeine is absorbed slowly, from drinks much better but its optimal form is tablets or capsules. So it is absorbed quickly, fully and has a minimum negative effect on the body. 
contraindications to its intake are individual intolerance to caffeine, anxiety disorders, as well as heart disease, which is accompanied by high blood pressure, arrhythmia and tachycardia. Patients with glaucoma and epilepsy should take caffeine with caution and only after consulting a doctor. Caffeine may inhibit the elimination from the body of a number of drugs, so you should carefully read the instructions about their possible simultaneous use. Do you take caffeine? In what cases does it help you?